In 2020, I'd been doing a lot of off-road. So, consequently, I had also bought myself a pair of motocross boots. O'Neill Elements, to be exact. All right, well, I'm doing, giving you a basic review of the O'Neill Element boot, motor, motocross boot. So, first thing you notice, that um, it's quite tall, goes to about the knee, and it's got four buckles and a bit of Velcro. A gusset right here goes up about two thirds of the way, and the buckles are plastic. They just kind of go in like this. You uh, ratchet them down. Now, the the ratchet that you use to adjust the strap, you kind of have to lift here and then push it in or out. And then once you when it once it comes tight and lays flat, it will always lock in. Uh, so again, kind of a smooth sole and a little steel cap. So I would say um, I'll, I'll, I've been using these for about uh, five or six months, and I put a good amount of time on them doing uh, single track enduro. track of a sort. Nothing too hardcore. These are kind of like my first actual motocross boots. So let me just give you uh, some of my thoughts and my opinions about them. First thing is um, the construction. It's quite good. That is double stitching, not just gluing, double stitching all around here, here, and here. Especially what I really like is the double stitching I have across the entire sole. A lot of other friends I have, they have motocross boots and they are glued here and eventually they come apart, they split apart. Another thing I like is that they have a steel cap here so that when you put your foot down and it's scuffing on the ground, it's less likely to peel that sole off. Um, What's both a benefit and a, um, a drawback is the fact that it's a rather smooth sole, not too much tread. The drawback is that if you're going to get off your bike and walk around in some rough terrain, it doesn't give you much traction. Uh, the good thing is, though, that it doesn't, uh, what do you call it, ingest a lot of mud in, into the boot, which can kind of get in the way later. Um, other things I like about it. The straps are fairly easily adjustable, and it's a, a good amount of support uh, laterally. It does come back a little bit, I'll just put it on. So you just put it in. So, uh, the flexibility is okay unless you break it in this direction. This forward, not so much, which is kind of a good thing. I don't want my foot ripped off if I uh, hit a stone with it. And then side to side, not, not really. So it's quite stiff um, in the directions you need it to be stiff. Uh, and that's what I do like about it. And uh, what else do I like about it? This area is reasonably good for uh, gripping the, the bike when I'm standing up. And uh, also one of the best things is the price. I got these for this bit of a discount. I think I got it for about $130 on Amazon. You can also get them on Revzilla. Uh, so that's what I really liked about them is that it was actually a fairly good boot for a low price. And I also like the fact that I can get it in more than just black. I wanted white, but that's all they had was gray. And uh, I, I, I get so tired of everything being in black. Not only is it kind of cliche, it's also, it gets quite hot. If you've ever been out in the sun in all black, you'll know what I'm talking about. Things I don't like. Okay, well when I first got them, 
they didn't have this flexibility. Uh, they were like made out of wood. They were so stiff, uh, I couldn't feel anything and I could barely move. So I had to spend a lot of time just pressing down like this, flexing the toe, flexing the ankle, and uh, then I put them on and I'd flex it back and forth um, to get it to where it was reasonably flexible. Um, another thing that I don't like about it is, interestingly, this the cap, the toe cap, on this right boot, it's really quite good. But on the left boot, the three screws that are here at the top continually come out, and I have to have a small screwdriver. And every day I use them, I gotta crank the screws back in so that the, the, the cap doesn't fall off. I think it was a construction problem. This cap is tight against the uh, the welt, but my other left boot cap is not tight, and it's a bit of a quality control issue. Also, they rust, and I mean, obviously, they're probably not going to make it out of stainless steel to keep the cost down, but um, I mean, they, they rust so readily, and of course, they're going to get wet, you're going to have to wash them, and that means they're going to rust. Uh, another thing I don't like is, um, in a way, the stiffness, it would be nice if there was a pivot right here. I suppose I can't complain because of what I paid for the boot. I mean, it is an entry level. Another thing, this part right here does not grip your shifter. So on the left side, especially when you're coming up to shift, to upshift, it just it slides all over the place. So you have to really get used to pushing your toe in and pushing up on the shifter. Also, you cannot, I suppose this is standard for any motocross boot, you cannot feel anything through here. You cannot feel anything through here. So you just have to get used to kind of knowing where your shifter and brake uh, levers are. And the biggest problem with this toe is this section right here. When you lean forward, I can't really do it with this boot because it's so stiff. When you lean forward, this will kind of, the boot will fold here. And this will kind of almost cut into your foot right about there. So, uh, and so they got this open area and then they've got the, the plastic here and the plastic here. So this plastic will kind of cut into your foot. So that's a little bit of a discomfort um, issue that I don't like about it. Another thing I don't like about these is kind of the, the buckles. Uh, they're plastic, not aluminum. That would be nice. And if you don't keep these oiled, not I mean, you don't have to use machine oil, just use like a vegetable oil. That will be very hard for you to push down. And there's been a few times where it's so stiff, I was afraid to close the buckle because I thought I was going to snap it. So I had to go find um, a little bit of tissue and just whatever oil I could find and wipe down each of these buckles to keep them flexible. Yeah, right here, this is very, very stiff. And you just get the feeling of, am I going to break it? Am I going to break it? And you don't want to be doing that when you're out in the field, right? Alright, so final thing I don't like about these boots. Well, almost the final thing. This gusset, it looks like it should be waterproof. I don't know. Is it supposed to be waterproof? Because it isn't. When I'm spraying these off, I try to keep the water mostly below the gusset. But all the same, the boots still get wet on the inside. So these boots are not completely waterproof, and I believe the water is ingressing through this apparently, supposedly waterproof gusset. So, I don't know, is that is it supposed to be waterproof, or is that just my imagination? Because it is not. And so that's a really big complaint. <clears throat> when you have them sealed up and you're driving, it's not too big of a deal. You go through a stream, You know, let's say the stream goes all the way up to your pegs, you go through one second, it's not that big of a deal. You do feel a little bit of water. When you go to spray them off, you get all the mud off these boots, you will notice it and they will get wet inside, no matter how hard you try to not. So that's kind of my complaint. Couldn't you have made this to actually stop water up to the gusset? And related to that is, when I get these boots wet, they are super difficult to dry out. There's not really an insert, like an inner booty. Sometimes you ever had like rollerblades or snowboard boots. You have an inner booty. 
you can pull out, where the lining pulls out completely like its own separate soft boot. And then you can dry that out. This you cannot. So once you get it wet in the padding, it stays wet for days. And I had had just in the past week, I took it out for one day and I got them pretty wet and I washed them off. And then I've had to have these open in front of a fan blowing dry air into them for like two days a piece and they're just starting to dry out. So I feel like it would have been, in, in an ideal world, I would have preferred to have a boot where I can pull out at least part or all of the padding in the inside and dry that out separately. Okay, so final analysis. Um, would I get these boots again at, given the situation? Yes, I probably would because of the value for money. I, like I said, in summary, it is pretty good value for money. Uh, if you maybe not familiar with motocross, you're like, I want to try it, or you want to do some single track or enduro. <laughs> so you want to have to protect your your leg, but you don't want to, especially here, but you don't want to, you know, invest two hundred, four hundred dollars in some boot. Uh, so yes, I would buy them again because I was uh, I was kind of new to the sport and. I didn't have a lot of money yet. What am I saying? I still don't have a lot of money, so I'll be keeping these for a while. Um, but yeah, I would. it would be nicer if they were, number one, um, had some sort of flex point here. Number two, didn't cut your foot in right there. Well, not cut, but press, put pressure on your foot. Number three, if this was actually waterproof. And number four, if there was some way to pull out the lining in the boot to dry it out separately. That would be nice. Oh, and also, number five, if they could make this so that the screws don't come out and uh, it didn't rust almost instantaneously, which is what it does. It's like insta-rust metal. I mean, couldn't we get a slightly better quality steel on this cap? So I think the boot is pretty good in concept, maybe not so good in execution, plastic clips as well. There's a few things that could be improved about this.